Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 11, Lecture 1. Smokers are 12 to 14 times more likely than non-smokers to have severe loss of attachment. They are likely to lose more teeth than non-smokers. They are 2 to 6 times more likely to exhibit periodontal destruction than non-smokers and 18 times more likely to be infected with periodontal pathogens than non-smokers. Smoking may be responsible for more than 50% of cases of periodontal disease among adults in the United States. The more or the greater the number of cigarettes smokes, smoked, the lower the number of healthy sextants in the patient's mouth. Comparing smokers with non-smokers, smokers have more attachment loss and more gingival recession, more alveolar bone loss, a greater number of deep pockets, more furcation involvement, and more tooth loss. This is figure 11.1 .1 on page 196 of your textbook showing a 37-year-old male cigarette smoker with 20-pack years of smoking. The severity of attachment loss is directly related to the cigarette smoked per day and the number of years that an individual has smoked. For every 10-pack year increment, there is a 1 millimeter increase in mean attachment loss. When a cigarette is smoked, more than 4,000 chemicals are released, including 60 cancer-causing chemicals. Secondhand smoke. It is generally accepted that even non-smoking individuals are affected by inhaling secondhand smoke. Smokeless tobacco results in an increased inflammatory response to the tissues. Increased inflammatory responses contribute to an accelerated breakdown of the periodontium and gingival recession at the site of placement. The American Academy of Periodontology strongly recommends inclusion of tobacco cessation in periodontal therapy. Smoking is a significant risk factor for periodontal disease. All patients should be assessed for smoking status. Smokers should be given smoking cessation counseling. Ask, advise, refer. The ADHA has developed a user-friendly model for tobacco cessation called Ask, Advise, Refer. For more information, go to their website listed here. Smoking is one of the most significant risk factors for periodontal disease. Smokers are 18 times more likely to be infected with periodontal pathogens than non-smokers. When a cigarette is smoked, 60 cancer-causing chemicals are released. The American Academy of Periodontology strongly recommends including tobacco cessation counseling in periodontal therapy. There are several theories as to why smokers have more periodontal disease than non-smokers. They involve effects on bacterial plaque, effects on the host response, and effects on healing. See figure 11.3 on page 198 of your textbook for more information on this image. Smokers may harbor more microbial species than non-smokers. More research is needed to clarify the effects of smoking on the bacterial composition of biofilm. The development of inflammation is suppressed in smokers. The typical clinical appearance of a smoker's gingival tissue exhibits little gingival inflammation or edema, a tendency to develop a fibrotic appearance, reduced bleeding due to decreased vascularization, decreased numbers of blood vessels in smokers. 
A 20-pack year smoker with advanced periodontitis is pictured here. Note that the clinical signs of inflammation are minimal. Your eyes may fool you. In smokers, a lack of bleeding on probing or no signs of inflammation does not indicate healthy tissues. Therefore, great care should be taken when performing a periodontal examination of smokers. Tobacco smoke and its constituents can inhibit PMN and macrophage defense functions. Components in tobacco may increase the production of cytokines or inflammatory mediators. Smoking impairs healing in all aspects of periodontal treatment, including non-surgical treatment, basic periodontal surgery, regenerative, regenerative periodontal surgery, and dental implant surgery. In non-surgical treatment, smoking is associated with less probing depth reduction and less attachment gain. Recap on disease progression in smokers. The mechanisms of disease progression in smokers may include effects on plaque, bacteria, host response, and healing response. The development of inflammation is suppressed in smokers. In smokers, the lack of bleeding on probing or signs of inflammation does not indicate healthy tissues. The American Academy of Periodontology strongly recommends inclusion of tobacco cessation in periodontal therapy. Ask, advise, refer. This concludes Perio Chapter 11, Lecture 1.